Hi, YouTubers. Let's talk about another cause of IBS. Now, acknowledging full well that you can have more than one of these things. Any one person is not likely to have just one thing. You're usually not going to have gluten sensitivity without leaky gut. You're not going to have SIBO without leaky gut. So there's um, the sky's the limit. You can have any of these. You can have all of these. But let's talk about another physiological pathway, another thing to have at the back of your head so that when you're talking to your doctor or you're seeking an expert in this topic, you know some of the stuff going in and you can know what to look for a little bit and sort of self-triage. So in recent years, basically ever since Datis Karazian's thyroid book came out, there's been this greater awareness around autoimmunity and the importance of healing your gut. So the GAPS diet and AIP diets, and even to a certain extent, paleo diets, a lot of people are really jumping on the bandwagon in a good way, uh, trying to heal their gut and acknowledging that 70 or 80% of your immune system hangs out around your gut. So if you want to heal the immune system, you can do so largely through working on the gut. That's a big tenant of naturopathic medicine and functional medicine. And that's what I do day in and day out. Um, and that's even applicable for some people who don't have any GI symptoms. It still could be coming from your gut. I had a guy last month who had just a rash and he had perfect bowel movements, no bloating, no GERD, no nothing. And it turned out his rash was coming from his gut. So I could do another video if you guys are interested on that. It's a fascinating little case study, but let's get back to IBS. So we can influence the immune system from working on the gut. So we can work in an inside out fashion, if you will. And that's pretty well understood. Uh, or it's, it's fairly well recognized and accepted, at least within the functional medicine world and the holistic kind of healing um, you know, professions and in the natural crunchy people communities. What's not as well accepted and what's not as well known is that it goes both ways. It's a two way street. It's not just a, oh, it's from inside out and you just need to heal the gut. Sometimes in order to heal the gut, you really need to heal the immune system or influence the immune system in order to get that progress on the gut. And here's where we launch into today's cause of IBS is I've got a, a lovely diagram drawn by yours truly. Um, we'll talk about bits of this and then we'll, we might get into the other part in a different video. I'm not sure. Um, but I was researching something called allodynia and specifically that is, uh, it's a neurological phenomenon where you get pain from something that should not be painful the best way to describe this is fibromyalgia. If you have fibro, you have allodynia. It's, it's kind of the fancy diagnosis for allodynia. And uh, in this example, you know, if I, if I poke on your arm or if I, if I touch you, that shouldn't cause pain. You should feel that it's there, but it shouldn't cause you actual pain. For people with fibro who have allodynia, this perception of pain and this experience of pain without an actual painful stimuli, this is very painful. And it's not, it's not to say, by the way, that their pain isn't real. It is very, very real pain, and it really, truly hurts them. Um, the same thing can happen with your gut, and that's not as well recognized. You can have visceral allodynia or visceral hypersensitivity where you feel painful stimuli from your gut from things that should not cause you pain. The easiest example of this was, I think it was last week, I had a gal come in and amongst other things we talked about, she said, I get this sharp, awful pain that kind of feels like something is moving in my lower gut every single morning, shortly before I have a bowel movement. And it's always excruciating. And I said, half joking, half serious, it sounds like you're feeling your own motility, right? And she said, yes, that's exactly what it sounds like. And it's painful. So I explained this idea to her that, yes, normally it's like fibro. This shouldn't cause you pain. Your own motility shouldn't cause you pain. Your own gut moving and moving food through your system shouldn't cause you pain. But for some people, it does. And that's called visceral hypersensitivity 
or visceral allodynia. So here's where my, my lovely drawing comes in. Hopefully I can get it on the video. Um, I might need to. All right. Bear with the low tech uh, here. All right. So here's, um, here's where we're at. And this is, we might get into the viral infection part of this in another video. So kind of ignore that for right now. But the big thing to focus on is, sorry, this is going to be comical because I have no idea where my hand is. The big thing to focus on is up here. If you have immune, if you have immune dysfunction or your immune system is working right, or this little immune system teeter-totter between the types of T-cells, if that's off kilter or skewed in any way, then stuff starts to happen. You get inflammation. So actually those, those could have been connected. Um, it's going to increase your risk of certain infections and autoimmunity because you're going to be inefficient at killing bugs. And then this, this pattern of immune dysfunction, I'm going to do this way because this is awkward. Um, when that little immune seesaw is off kilter, and it's one of my favorite things to talk about, when those cells are like this, right? And one side is overactive and one side is suppressed, that turns on mast cells and the allergic side of the immune system. And you make more antibodies to stuff and histamine. And histamine will be the topic of another video because that's another issue with IBS. Um, but you're getting these immune cells turned on that create histamine and create inflammatory soup and then that will flame out your gut and that makes the nerve endings in your gut much more hypersensitive to pain and non painful stimuli and that's where the link seems to be between this visceral hypersensitivity or allodynia this perception of pain without a painful stimuli and the immune system so yes there's going to be a bit of back and forth maybe you need to heal the gut in order to heal that immune system and then healing the immune system will heal the gut further. That's sometimes true. But I find that a lot of times I need to work on both the immune system and the gut in order to heal both. If your immune system is suppressed or wonky, it's it's going to be a really hard uphill battle to just only focus on the gut and nothing else. Um, there's other things like, like working on hormones, and vitamin deficiencies, and those will create an uphill battle too, but this is a really big, big one. Um, and here's one more opportunity to show you my beautiful drawing, which again, I'm gonna try to get my hand in here and show you is, let's see. All right, is, gosh, now I'm gonna crack out of me. There, is in this diagram at least, the step that I drew first is viral infections. Other things can cause this too. So viral infections, candida or yeast. So I think some bacterial infections could do this, but viruses are probably the best at it, is these little suckers want to live just like SIBO, just like anything else. They want to live and the best way they can do that is by manipulating your immune system to make sure that they live. And when they do that, and again, we could have a direct link between all of these three. They're going to create this immune dysfunction with that little seesaw that I drew being off kilter. They're going to create inflammation, which in and of itself isn't good for your gut. And they're going to cause inflammation for your brain and your nervous system way down here, the, the neuroinflammation. And that's going to impair your vagus nerve and make it difficult for you to regulate your motility and digest your food. Um, really, the, the bigger topic of this video was the visceral hypersensitivity thing, but these things can all set the stage for SIBO and overgrowths of bugs and candida overgrowth because of alterations in motility and your immune surveillance in your gut. So uh, hopefully this wasn't too discombobulated pulling up my my little drawing back and forth for you guys. And if nothing else, I gave you a good chuckle. Uh, but this is one of the facets of IBS that is very common. And that's why I choose to work on the immune system and the gut simultaneously in a lot of circumstances.